Yeah, what age was it before that you found e-com? What were you doing at the moment with your life? This was in 2022. I was sitting on my last last euros and I worked at like a local supermarket here called Jumbo. To be honest, I was I was happy back then. I didn't know there was more. And then I just came across dropshipping. I did like 10,000 turnover in the first month. To go in the first three months to one million in uh, in revenue is, is crazy, right? Man, I, w I was fulfilling my orders through AliExpress myself back then. What were some of the hiccups along the way or obstacles? If you're going from zero to like good numbers in a short time, of course the banking wonders, what are you doing? There's so much money coming in, going out. First seven months you did two million in revenue. And I was on my mother's Facebook account then. She said, oh, I got the notification. Your page and business manager is suspended. I think many people, they just accept what they have because they don't even have an idea of, of, of the money they can make, the life they can live. From. I wanted to prove myself to certain people who, who doubted me or wanted to say you won't succeed. He said you will fail because I've already tried it. Yes, guys, welcome to this first ever video of this channel. So what is this channel going to be about? It will be very powerful interviews with my clients my successful clients because i have so many i choose the best ones of course the first one we start with a banger it's gonna be dennis he's doing one million a month consistently with his drop shipping business he started with a course of mine three years ago from absolutely zero then went on to become one of my best students of course we started working together with my elite program became there one of the head coaches and is now absolutely crushing it created many successful e-com entrepreneurs that are completely murdering in the industry. We're going to dive deep into his story. What are the strategies he uses at the moment, where he came from, what are his future plans, also his view on e-com as a whole. It's a one hour long, powerful interview. Grab pen and paper, take notes because you want to do that for sure with this one. All right. See you in the video. All right. Yes, I'm here with uh, Dennis. Today we're going to do uh, yeah, nice interview, gonna dive deeper into his journey and how everything has been for him so far. Um, I know Dennis now for over two years, so yeah, let's uh, dive deeper into it. He also became uh, the head coach within our uh, elite program and uh, has an amazing uh, journey. So Dennis, how is uh, life at the moment? Life at the moment is pretty good. So uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Um, yeah, life, life's very good. Actually, just came back from Dubai um, and now here in Holland again. Very good for focus and now we're just building. So is your um, main location still the Netherlands? Um, yeah. Or how do you see that uh, pan out for yourself? Uh, no, I think it will be still, uh, still the Netherlands. Uh, I'm just a little bit contemplating between uh, what I want. Um, I think for me, um, how, how I've set up Holland right now with my family, I, I, I love family. Um, I, want, I want there to be a financial uh, reward for moving to Dubai. So uh, when I will save an X amount of tax, um, then I, I would think about going to, to Dubai. So right now it's just Holland. Yeah, yeah, nice man, yeah, for me. I, I really uh, started to enjoy Dubai a lot more over the last uh, years, actually. Yeah, that's for me as well. Um, I th I'm enjoying it way more. Um, but still, um, I don't know, perhaps in a year we will talk differently. Yeah, and, and you know the good thing with this uh, and the position we both are in, we don't have to make necessary uh, moves. We can be and do where we want, right? So Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, dive into it because there are also many things I don't uh, even know yet about uh, uh, yeah, you or where, where it started. So maybe you can uh, yeah, take, take us back to even maybe a bit before you found Ecom. Like where was you at and uh, yeah, yeah. What sure. age, uh, um, yeah, what age was it before that you found Ecom? What were you doing at the moment with your life? Yeah, sure. So right now I'm just turned 26. And I think when I started with Ecom, I was 23. So a little bit older maybe than the, than the generation that is starting right now. And before that, I was, um, I was a personal trainer. So I was a freelancer for that. And I worked at like a, like a local supermarket here called Jumbo. 
uh, and I was uh, like a half truck driver there. Um, and basically, I was really content with life back then. Um, I thought I earned pretty good. I think around 2,500 euros a month. Um, I was, to be honest, I was I was happy back then. Um, I didn't know there was more. So, of course, then then you are happy. Um, so that was it. Just just like I think your average Joe life. Um, just going out every weekend, going to the gym, working, this and that. Um, and then I, I became a personal trainer because that was where always my interest was. And I, I, I met a guy um, um, and he was the owner of that, that gym. Uh, it was in Groningen. It was a, a pretty luxury place. And that's where I really wanted to be an, an entrepreneur because I saw what he was doing. I was really inspired by it. And while it has nothing to do with e-com, right? Um, uh, but then I watched some of your videos and some other USA guys. Um, and he told me, hey, actually, I have a store as well. And it's, I think it was doing like 10, 10 million a year back then. Um, it was doing very well w without basically anybody knowing it. Um, and that really got me inspired. So then I immediately go to the, um, the KVK, you call it here, so where you register your, your business. And then I wanted to sell supplements because I thought, hey, my interest in, is in the fitness niche. I want to do something online. Um, so I wanted to sell supplements. Uh, then you have all these regulations, of course, with selling food, with uh, basically selling diet to, to, to humans uh, eating. Um, and then I just came across dropshipping, started doing it. Um, my first month was like, okay, I sold like a, like a back stretcher. I found it online. Um, I even did UGC content myself. So you saw myself lying on that thing in the videos. I think did like 10,000 turnover in the first month. Um, so that didn't really work out. Uh, but of Still course... pretty okay, right? For the first month. Yeah, it's, it's pretty okay. Um, and, and then COVID was there. And I, I remember this so well. Um, like it didn't succeed the way I wanted to. Like, of course, making a good profit. Um, and then I listened to a podcast of... Basically a similar podcast, I think, like this. How somebody who did like... Um, good revenue found his winning products and he said like you know what I did he said um, I was scrolling through AliExpress I was just only focusing through every subcategory and everything that stood out uh, that's what I just put in a new tab and afterwards I will check it out uh, literally I was 10 minutes in then I found like a chair uh, a gaming chair and I thought like yeah with COVID people need like chairs for working at home and then in my first four months of that, I did over 1 million in revenue. And then, yeah, everything started basically. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about uh, the journey before I started and uh, so a lot has happened since then. How, how did that uh, uh, go down? Like you, you, of course you opened your, uh, your Shopify store, but to go in the first three months to 1 million in, uh, in revenue is, is crazy, right? Yeah. Um, can you tell like what uh, platforms did you advertise on? What market were, were you active? Yeah, sure. Uh, that was mainly in the USA. So my supplier back then had a, had a warehouse in the USA. So I didn't even need to, to, to ship to there. They basically shipped uh, two to three business days, which is very well for, for a heavy item. Um, and then I just, uh, man, I, w I was fulfilling my orders through AliExpress myself back then. I was uh, pl placing the orders. Um, it it was, was very crazy. Everything through Facebook with the, the AliExpress images even from them. So they had just really nice uh, edited AliExpress images. Um, I can actually send you some pictures and then we can edit it in here, which I sold. And then uh, it just immediately hit. Uh, of course, I sold it for $300. So every sale you got, it was like really immense, right? Um, so yeah, it was mainly in the US and a little bit here in Holland. Was it was your store like branded or how did you do it? Like back then, I didn't thought it was branded, but actually it was branded because I was like editing all the pictures. I was uh, basically having like a whole story behind it. Um, I even um, messaged some people on Instagram which were like gamers, and I said, "Hey, if you want a free chair, can you like make some UGC content basically?" And that's what I displayed in the website. So back then, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I was maybe sort of building something. I would call it just branded dropshipping. Yeah. 
yeah, sick man. So um, you you go from zero to one million uh, in, in revenue over three months. Yeah. What were some of the, the the hiccups along the way or obstacles? I think you you going to those numbers with like so little of experience yet must have come with uh, some headaches. Yeah, one one hundred percent. Because of course it's revenue, guys. Eh? It's not profit. Um, I think I, if, how did you feel at the moment also when you go to those numbers, right? Because before that you were you were working at the supermarket. So. Yeah, man. No, I was feeling on, on top of the world. And of course, I was learning so much. Um, I was back then in your group, of course, uh, the brand building group. Um, yeah, I was think, thinking I was one of the guys who were doing the, the most numbers there. Um, I felt really good. But the only thing that was a downside is... I think a lot of people who start will know that is if you're going from zero to like good numbers in a short time, of course, the banking wonders, hey, what are you doing? There's so much money coming in, going out. So I had some problems with that, uh, like in terms of cash flow. Um, but man, it, it felt very good. I was, I don't think I was really proud back then. I showed everything to my mother. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was a really good time, man. Was your uh, uh, your your mom also one of the biggest uh, driving uh, motivators for you to succeed? Or no, no, I don't think so. Right now it is, but back then, um, I think I was just pretty. I don't want to sound it like hopeless in life, but I didn't have like any drive or any 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 mission. And as soon as I started to figure this out, I was thinking, Jesus, I can. You can make so much money. Um, I always wanted to go to Thailand. Uh, I didn't have the money for it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it really opened my eyes what you can do with money, right? Um, so I think that was the biggest the biggest drive back then and still is, of course. Yeah, man. Yeah, for, for me, uh, in the beginning, it was, it was also not that I, I did it for, for my mom or my parents because in the beginning, it's more you, you're focused on yourself, right? I mm -hmm. think it's more you cannot even take care of yourself uh, yeah. properly yet. Yeah, yeah. But uh, now I realize with the success uh, at the moment, it's it's amazing, man. Yeah. With, with, with the impact you can make, it's it's really nice because, uh, for example, we often forget. But I mean, you started like six years ago. I started three years ago. But the things we're doing right now are the things we've always dreamt uh, dreamed of, right? And I think uh, right now we are dreaming of new things, of course, which is good. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes I'm really grateful for uh, yeah for the life we are living right now with the opportunities we have. Yeah, and time time goes very fucking fast, man. Yeah, you say very six fast. years, I feel like OG, but now uh, it it is it went like this, right? Yeah, yeah, and that that's that's nice. Um, no, so th then I started, um, and then I had a best friend. Um, his, his name was Marek. And he was really, really curious what I was doing. He wanted to do the same. Um, so back then, my store was going a little bit downwards. Uh, I don't know. Back then, I didn't know what creative testing was. Or uh, Was this after you did the one million in yeah, revenue? After, after, yeah, after. So yeah, what so happened? You, happened? Yeah, I, I had a bet with him. I said, if I can do uh, more than 10,000 in my first month, you will take me to dinner. If I don't, I will take you to dinner. Obviously, I, I, I did. But he was really intrigued with, hey, uh, what are you doing? These are crazy numbers. Um, and then basically he started to do the same thing as me. So scrolling through AliExpress, going to every subcategory and checking out what, what stands out. And he started to sell clocks, like wall clocks. And uh, I kid you not, in his first months, he did something like 100,000 profit as well. So um, I was really proud of him, of course. We were having an office together, just two young boys. Uh, just not knowing exactly what they are doing, but really enjoying it. Um, so he went really well uh, with a little bit of my guidance. Um, and that's when we decided, hey, what can we do more? Because we were both pretty in the high ticket niche. And that's when we discovered low ticket uh, drop shipping. And then really, <laughs> it, it might sound very cliche, but we started with the low ticket in Germany, France and Holland. And in no time, we did one million there as well. So we went sky high, pr pretty pretty fast. Um, so yeah, that's when I really thought, man, this is life changing. Um, and what was the strategies uh, at, with that? Because uh, yeah. so back then, uh, we watched a lot of uh, what's his name, Firam John, I think. 
It's, uh, I believe, a Chinese YouTuber. He's really, uh, really experienced. And he just said, uh, had like case studies of products. And we were thinking like, okay, let's just find a product. And we saw like, um, um, we tested like just general store, like five products a day. And then we found a couple of winners. Uh, we had a shoe we were selling very well. So that's when we dived into shoes only, um, expanding into Holland, France, Germany. Um, so yeah, that was just, uh, it, it was so easy then. Still is, so of course. This was the moment that you went into general dropshipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and what made you go in? go into that and see the opportunity there compared to what you did before because of course it, it has it has its differences uh, it has its differences both has its cons and its pros um i think i back then i wasn't capable enough i think of of um, getting that um, gaming chair store running profitably again and then you are committed to one product right or one niche of products and right now i was thinking like hey we can sell like five different or ten different products a day we sold like blankets, we sold um, uh, gels, we sold every sort of stuff. And some things worked and others didn't. But it was so relatively easy to scale. Uh, that's what really stood out for us. So this was then still in your first year of uh, yeah. start? Yeah, I think in my first seven months this is. Wow, so in your, you, in your first seven months you did two million in revenue. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 insane yeah man i remember we had like a little group of e-commerce entrepreneurs some of your course and uh, we had like um bi-weekly zoom calls where we just shared info etc and then i said to him oh guys i did a new record day i did 15k oh they said oh nice uh, i said 15k in profit so it was fifteen thousand euros in profit and they were just like really shocked um and and that's when you're doing such such numbers that's of course very life-changing Wow, yeah. So at at this uh, time, I can imagine you you are uh, yeah doing good numbers. You're scaling, but it must come with also some uh, some obstacles, right? Yeah. Uh, what what yeah, were definitely. the these back then? Uh, back then, if I think about it, <laughs> or was it just too easy? Because with what year was this? Uh, 20, 2020? Uh, 2021. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think 2021, as far as I can remember, uh, iOS 14 came. That was for me a big obstacle. Yeah, that was a big obstacle. Yes. I think the biggest obstacle for us back then is uh, Facebook structures, because of course, high skill dropshipping. Yeah, there are complications, which is okay. I mean, the complications are there to be to be won. Uh, but I still remember it so well. We scaled to 40,000 euros in one day. Um, there was a Saturday. Um, and on Sunday, my grandmother, was it was her birthday. So I thought like, oh, this day we're going to do phenomenal. And I was on my mother's Facebook account then. And we were at my grandmother's birthday in, in the morning. And she said, oh, I got a notification. Your page and business manager is suspended. And I was like, oh, fuck no. Because, I mean, you're doing 40K on a Saturday. Of course, you're going to scale. Um, so came together, yeah, everything was, uh, was, uh, you know, fucked basically. So we started all over with a new store and next Saturday we again did 40 K because you can just, um, uh, duplicate your ads, right. With same pixel and I kid you not, same thing happened for the Sunday. So uh, that's when we are really peak high. Um, and after that we had a fair share of struggles. So we never could go back to the, like the numbers we were doing, especially profit wise. Um, those were the biggest, biggest challenges, I think, especially finding a Facebook structure back then, because there wasn't really a clear structure back then as, as we have right now. Um, so then I started with, with TikTok after that, basically. And, and, uh, with doing those, uh, those, those numbers you just mentioned, this was still all meta and, uh, yeah, only meta 100%. You did single interest targeting at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started, uh, like, I can't even remember. Uh, we started ABO testing. So the ABOs that are doing well, we put them into a, a stacked interest CBO, I think. And we were doing lookalikes. Lookalikes were performing like crazy back then. 
So of course, nobody now, I hope, uh, uses them anymore. But back then, it, it, it was uh, very fun to scale then. You wanted to go as broad, as broad as possible. And right now, we want to stick it into to one CBO, of course. So that is something that's changed along the way, of course, as well. Did you have a, a, a team uh, at the time that you already built? Because you were still with, with that partner you just yeah. uh, mentioned. Yeah. So, uh, the, the the gaming chairs, I, it wasn't the best decision, but I, I thought my mother can do the customer service. Um, so, yeah, that, that wasn't the best decision ever. Um, luckily, only few refunds, so that was very good. Um, and to be honest... Uh, like the first million we did with low ticket, we did everything ourselves. Even to a certain point, customer service. And once we get like 50 to 100 e uh, tickets a day, that's when we delegated that. But still the product research, the listing, the um, making the ads, um, scaling the ads, we did everything ourselves. We were just putting in the hours like uh, from early morning to uh, late nights. And that was so fun. Uh, Back then, I didn't even know what team building was. We never considered it. Mm. And, and that's also, in the beginning, you're, you're not even seeing it as a business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like, okay, build a team, have, uh, have the, the numbers properly. But in the beginning, you just look at, uh, let's scale this shit and uh, <laughs> see what happens. I, I yeah. didn't have a, a long-term vision for, I, I think only a couple of years ago, that really came in. I always had had goals, but I never looked at the business as a, 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 a corporation to build or something. No, no, for us back then, especially not. Um, if I, if I, we were just like having fun, basically making good money. And uh, yeah, that was it. That was it. But I remember the first years and then when I found my success, bro, you're just on like a cloud. Uh, it's, it's, it was too sick because you find something, uh, to completely change your life, right? And you're making money from your laptop, from your phone. I was still, uh, yeah, with my mom uh, living. I think you, you as well at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, bro, there were, it was a crazy uh, roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, we 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 always went to like an office we were renting for 400 euros a month. Um, man, we, we had the best times there. Um, and actually, funny, um, like uh, my business partner Mark back then he was like really good with a guy in the in the car industry and I said like man we, we have this money right now but I don't want to spend it silly and then we were just like renting every weekend we were renting a car of course it's it might be silly it might be not but uh, then we like drove for the first time like an Audi S5 from 2019 I think man and I never drove like an expensive car before um, and that's where I also really started to have um uh, like materialistic goals so cars watches and not to be to be selfish but i could never dream before e-commerce of having such things right um it's something that never came across my mind but i think um like the the watches i have or the, the car i have they represent so many um uh, private victories i always had so um uh, uh, to buy for example a watch of 40 or fifty thousand euros um, the private victories you you have to endure to to get to spend such numbers um, those are the things that that really made me want to do like uh, or to, to buy certain that's types of things. It has the value it has yeah uh, that's why it are, are are trophies to go for yeah and I always um, emphasize that it's good to attach your business goals towards uh, a materialistic goal. yeah me too me too. It's the journey. It's the journey towards those goals that makes it so, so nice. Um, that's also why I always say to people who are doing e-commerce. Of course, you have your your why. So let's say you make your first ten, maybe twenty thousand euros, and if your goal was always to travel, go travel with that money because then you really start to feel and to experience why you are doing certain types of things. I mean, the first time I was going to uh, Thailand, I lived there for a year. I mean. It was crazy. You just wake up, of course, do, do your thing, and then you travel, you enjoy. If, if that's your why, really experience it. If it is buying certain types of things like a Rolex or anything, I would say just do it, man, because then you really start to envision uh, what you've done and what you can do with it. 
And and I I really believe that if you want to go further, you have to spend some of the money because you, yeah. like you mentioned, you experience it, you bump into others who are also uh, doing bigger numbers. You, you you don't bump into those if you just sit on your money at home. Right? Yeah, exactly. So exactly. How, how you you decided at one point, okay, you're uh, doing all right with ecom to uh, go to Thailand. That was yeah. the first. Uh, like like move uh, abroad you yeah. just to stay there or how was that uh, chapter can you tell no we, uh, back then with my ex-girlfriend we just like booked a one-way ticket um, we went to Thailand to Bali Singapore uh, but back then my business was, do was doing shit because I was way too comfortable there right so to be honest that this was in 2022 uh, I was sitting on my last last euros back then I think to be honest um, so of course uh, it can go all very fast, but if you're starting to enjoy life, you're starting to put way less hours in, uh, then it can go downhills uh, as fast as possible. I think you know that. Uh, a lot of other people know that. Um, so that was a really good reality check. Of course, uh, uh, you might have turned over like 2 million or 3 million maybe back then. Um, but in my mind, I thought I had 3 million, right, to spend. But of course, your profit maybe what was hit, in all honesty, maybe net 10%. Had to share that with with the business partner as well you had your expenses um so i didn't have as much money as, as i thought so and then i was looking at my on my banking account and i thought oh uh, we need to do something here so this is only one and a half years ago maybe two years ago by now um and that's where i really grew uh mentally so much um and right now uh, it's just going very well but I think uh, a lot of guys, especially in e-com, it's always just like a little bit of a roller coaster. Sometimes it's going very well, sometimes it's not going so well. And that's, I believe that's with every, every single brand or store that is the case because um, you always have certain types of months where it's going so well and then you have certain types of months where it's going less well. And back then I was, I was worrying about those months where it didn't go well, right? And that's why I took fear-based uh, decisions because you are uh, f living in the in that fear moment right um, and right now we just had February we bo both had a shitty month I, I believe but right now my my vision or the way of thinking is not different than it was uh, in January where we did like multiple six figures in profit I think that's one of the biggest things that also shifted with you right uh, yeah. also, uh, the the mindset uh, over over the years yeah man. but Still, I do think that in the beginning that you you went went very quick to with your uh, results. What what yeah. do you think contributed to that? Um, to do like two million in your first seven months is is good, and it also shows that you had some type of uh, maybe a, a aggression to succeed. Or yeah, maybe, uh, it's what I still have. Uh, yeah. I'm very impatient, and that's a good thing because I want to see results fast. Um, I, I always have this mentality of the guy who is thinking for something for 100 days and he uh, plans to execute it perfectly. And the guy who just starts, the guy who starts is way in advance after 100 days. Yeah. So that's what I always had. Um, and I had some, some proof. I wanted to prove myself to certain uh, people who, who doubted me or wanted to say you won't succeed. Um, and when I had that, like, that screenshot of doing like 300,000 in a month and I showed that, for example, to my to my uncle who, who never uh, believed in it. He said, you will fail because I've already tried it. I mean, those were the moments I, I, yeah. uh, I lived for. That, that, that it's, that's the best thing. Yeah, to go wrong. yeah, especially maybe prove myself wrong as well, because I was so up until 23 years old, I, I, I lived a life where I was very yeah, happy with, because I didn't know there was much more to, to live for. Right. So, um, uh, back then, I really didn't have any visions or I, I could watch Netflix in all honesty for 10 hours a day. I watched Prison Break in, in two weeks. That's uh, that's something I could never do do again. But uh, man, when I look at like the old Dennis uh, and, and right now, I'm so grateful um, because I think after three and a half years right now, I know what makes me very happy, what makes me like happy inside. And that's just when you are growing. I think when you're growing business, uh, growing your mindset, um, growing your vision, growing with your family. Um, and I think that's really where people are happy, but some people just choose to be very 
very uh, yeah, comfortable in every aspect of life. I, I really uh, see in each aspect you, you've you grown immensely and that's sick because maybe in the beginning, like you just mentioned, you don't even have a clue that that you can become that, right? Yeah. Uh, I think many people, they just accept what they have because they don't even have a, uh, an idea of, of yeah, what that's they it. or the money they can make, the life they can live, right? Yeah. And it's funny because back then, of course, I was really... Um, um, really going to the gym was very ha happy with that and I always wore uh, Gymshark clothes but when I started my entrepreneurship um, I thought who, who is behind Gymshark it was Ben Francis and, and Lewis Morgan I watched all of the podcasts I could find about him and, and, and that's where I really thought they always had like a, a line be a visionary and I never knew what it meant I never knew what it meant but I was wearing the clothes I think a lot of people who are wearing the clothes don't know what that is what that word is right now I've tethered it here um, because I really lived by, by by that word and I think for some it means something different than for others but I think I was always wearing their, their clothes as a fan and right now I'm basically a fan of the people behind it um, and to build such a such a great great brand, um, it's funny because now you look very different at such a brand than you were without knowing the numbers they are doing. Um, that same with a lot of other brands. Yeah. So so talking about like a brand, um, you you've always done general. I think for people it's very uh, interesting to know because maybe even if they are beginning or further in their journey. It, um, it are two different things. What makes the general so good? Because also with our clients, we have, uh, in terms of dropshipping, 70% does like general. Yeah. What, what, what makes it so, so good uh, in terms of succeeding with it? I think what's the biggest plus side is from zero to, let's say, a million. I can't think of a different business model than general dropshipping where you can do it the fastest way. That being said, I think right now uh, I um, have done a fair few millions in, in general dropshipping. Right now we are looking for different things as well, right? Because um, there are a few names I know of who did like great, great numbers with, with general dropshipping. Um, but I think especially for the first few, first few, even thousands or uh, thousands in profit, general dropshipping is the way to go. Because you can have a website done by tomorrow, you can just sell already proven products, uh, launching the ads. I mean, it, it's so, so, so easy, basically. So that's the reason why we stick with it. Uh, we only found like the good formula, I think, two years ago. So we're only doing it basically for two years. Uh, we did very well in those two years, especially since last year, November, of course, did very well in the German market then. Um, so yeah, that, that's the biggest thing I would, I would, uh, I would say. Yeah. And, and it, it also leaves uh, the, a lot of the thinking process out of it. You can just put yeah. your head down and, and, and uh, have the strategies. You, know, you, you, you see what works for others. Yeah, I, I look around with clients, of course, check their ads manager, and they're selling the same things I sold, for example, two years ago. So with general dropshipping, you see like a cycle of repeating products again and again and again as well. Yes, because well, what do you say to people who say... Uh, is this saturated or uh, looking for products that nobody has sold before overcomplicating the whole process? I think that's, that's a good, it can be good, for example, but that, those are just a few products, right? Um, I think there, there will be never any saturation with products. Um, of course, people won't buy a fidget spinner anymore right now. That was back then. But if you look for yourself, I mean, I always buy new clothing, especially with fashion dropshipping. People always buy new clothing. So maybe the shirts you are selling this year won't sell as good next year, but then a different shirt does. Or maybe the jeans we are selling right now don't perform so good. I think same with you, right? You sold jeans. You sold very tight jeans in the beginning with like a lot of holes in it and paintings, etc. And right, right now you sell different types of jeans or different types of trousers. And yeah. I think the, the product itself won't never get saturated, but maybe there is like new demand for it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just also what is trendy at the moment, but the demand for clothing, for example, in general, will always be there. It will yeah. just change a little bit what type of style. Yeah. 
but yeah with 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 that for example i only see it uh, be becoming better you know like it will only become bigger the population is growing people tend to shop way more online right now that only grows every second it even grows um, the opportunities that are there with with e-commerce especially with supply chain from china to to your consumers in in europe or uh, asia or in in, in uh, united states that's that's crazy. And we don't need to overcomplicate it. I think that's what a lot of people do. They overcomplicate it. But if there is demand for a product, let's just take um, Netherlands, for example. We have uh, 16 million people here. So 16 million people, let's say 8 million women, 8 million men. Um, then let's say 60% is 18 plus, right? So you have 5 million roughly potential customers to buy a t-shirt for, for a man, for example. Uh, <laughs> There's no way I can supply all of those people. We cannot even do it together, right? Um, look at, for example, Mr. Marvis. I don't know when they started, but not so long ago. And they are dominating the entire Chino market right now, right? So, uh, and in a few years, there will be a different uh, dominating uh, 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 brand there. So there's always such a huge amount of demand. And I think people, for example, let's say you're doing 10,000 euros a day on your store. That's roughly 300 orders. I mean, 300 orders, what's that on total? Even 3,000 orders a day is, is it's nothing compared to what's being sold uh, um, online. It's nothing. I, if no. I, I look at my Shopify sometimes and I see the amount of orders I do in a day, I think, what, 1,000 orders, what is that? Why mm -hmm. I need to do more, man? Yeah. So what, what at the moment are, um, are like your objective? What is like your future uh, uh, plan? Um, so in all honesty, I can make like a bullshit story right now. I, I haven't planned it out perfectly. Um, I am always living a little bit more day, day by day, which of course translates in the position I'm right now because I'm way more focused on dropshipping. However, um, actually last week I had a very good conversation with a, with a friend of mine and he always did general dropshipping. I think we were one of the guys who were doing like good numbers with that. And he transitioned to a brand eight months ago and he finished February uh, around 4 million in the US markets. So I think that's that's crazy with fulfillment from China, of course. So um, we always had some brand ideas uh, and that's where we really want to emphasize a little bit more on this year, just to, to gain a little bit more sus sustainability and longevity. But other than that, it's just doing what we do good, finding products, sell them with uh, with margin and, and rinse and repeat that process. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it, it, it doesn't matter, right? If it brings in profits, it doesn't Profits matter. are the most important. So, um, like, I won't disclose what, like, are the goals, but we want to have some sort of money in, in, in the account, um, me and, and my current business partner. I already know that there is one goal that we will accomplish this year. Um, and I know it for a fact. So at the end of the year, we will both drive a Uber's. So right now he drives a nice Mercedes and I have a nice Range Rover, but those were like the childhood dreams we always had. And this year we will 100% uh, yeah, get that. So I think those are the goals right now. And other than that, it's just self-improving. I think biggest goal is to uh, improve my body because I've been lacking on that a little bit too much. So, uh, yeah, on Monday, we will start with, uh, with a part of the community, the 75 heart. So we already have 70 people joining in right now. So I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, man. You just have to, uh, yeah, uh, take all boxes, right? Where you yeah. want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. And of course, um, helping and making a big impact with all our current clients. Um, because in all honesty, and I don't want to uh, like to praise ourselves, but back then when I started, I wish there was something like which we are having right now. Um, basically, we're putting all of our cards uh, on the table, what we are doing. Uh, for example, uh, next week, we'll, I will even record and uh, display all of the products I've sold. Um, so, yeah, man, that's case something study. I want. From A to Z, a case study. Yeah. I think I, it would have saved me hundreds of millions even if I had guidance properly. But I, I, when I started, it was not a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Was not yeah, a big, it was, wasn't a big thing. No. It were courses, but then you still have to do uh, most yourself and make 
plenty of the mistakes yourself because I think with uh, the one-on-one -on -one we offer, it's, it's hand-holding and also looking in the business, people warning for certain mistakes they are yeah. going to make. If it's with the cash flow or a way they are handling their back end, right? Or, or you know, in the front end, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I think you don't have that when it's just a course because people can think they do it perfectly, but maybe there's like a, a silent uh, mistake they are making that will become a, a, a huge uh, problem later. Yeah, man, and we had our fair share of mistakes together, of course. Um, so yeah, that's something. And I'm curious, uh, back, basically, because I know it's a little bit more about me, but uh, like, um, if you look at uh, six years you're doing e-commerce right now, what what's like the the best thing you've ever done and like the worst thing you have ever done? Um, yeah, let's start with the the, the bad news uh, first, right? The, the worst the worst was in in investing. A, a half a million of my money that I had liquid uh, into uh, crypto in 2000. Uh, and liquid 21. is a lot, eh? Liquid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just, it was just FOMO and me being young and reckless and and living a, a, a crazy life at 21 years old, like being in in Dubai, seeing uh, people around me making millions in a, in, a, in a day with their portfolio. And in the beginning, I remember this very clearly. Even when I was at my uh, living still with my mom, there were people, of course, doing crypto. And I said, I will never do that. It's not for me because I know it's not for me. And f fast forward uh, a year or two later, I'm there investing half a million into it because, yeah, you cannot you cannot lose with it. But uh, that was stupid because I needed that money later down the line, uh, brought the, myself and uh, the brand into massive difficulties. Yeah, that was just shit. But um, looking back to it right now, I've learned so much during that time because mm -hmm. I think I had maybe the same what, what you had. At one point, you get a bit comfortable, right? And this completely pulled me out of comfort because I had to uh, yeah, uh, build uh, everything back up uh, properly. Also, I was 14 striked in the, the summer, I remember. What was the revenue you were doing back then? I, I was doing... Every month, 300k in revenue, okay. and uh, with with 100k profit like consistently, so very healthy profits. I remember this very well. I had I had like a um, a collection with uh, Icon, like a luxury comfort collection, and it just blew up because COVID hit. I didn't know that it was going to happen. I just was launching this comfort collection. It was just perfect timing, um, but that was very hard. Um, yeah, the 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 best. The, that was the worst, the best, yeah, the, honestly, the best moment throughout my whole six years I was uh, last uh, Q4. Last Q4 was just, everything was unbelievable. First of all, w with with the, the brand Icon, with the records we did, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, crazy, man, unbelievable. Almost 1 million in a day. Uh, we did 785 in a day. Then... Uh, the, the beginning of that, or we had the, the week before Black Friday, we did this mastermind here at my uh, my oh, yeah. uh, house, right, and then the Black Friday week began. So I, I want everyone to experience like a moment like this. It was like so much tension is building up because you, you have to imagine that you put like millions in stock that you have to sell. So even though you have a solid brand, you it still uh, has to happen, right? You're still taking a risk. Um, we ended up doing that that week very well, but the beginning of the week, my dad called me. He said, "Yeah, I have a visa. I can come to uh, the Netherlands." He wasn't been in the Netherlands for twelve years. He never could get a visa. He said, "It's only uh, for uh, I can only uh, be there for one month. Then it expires." And and the week after, I was flying to Dubai, so I was like, "Fuck!" So I was like, "Ah, oh, he has to come." So mm -hmm. literally, what happened the Friday of Black Friday? Of, of or the the yeah the no the the Saturday after Black Friday, yeah. uh, in early morning he uh, he arrived at Schiphol. And matter of fact, the day before that, I did like half a million in a day, right? And I come uh, at Schiphol, he, I, I pick him up. Just uh, yes, sickest moment because he never uh, saw what we uh, really did. He I, I told him we do like good with ecom, but. I think he never really um, 
uh, envisioned like how big it was. Uh, my mom tried to tell me, but he didn't get it. And uh, yeah, this was hands down the best moment of uh, of last year for me. Also now looking back at it, yeah, it's just special to have those moments and to see it also from, I think the, the perspective of your parents, the success you've accumulated is just... Uh, yeah, I think that's that's uh, that should be on top one as well, yeah. Uh, so that that was just Q4 was just crazy things stacked uh, on each other, you know. One hundred percent. And I and I ordered the 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 Kulinen as well that uh, that uh, the December after, so it was just all awesome. Nice but man. Last year as a whole, I think for you as well. Yeah, crazy, unbelievable. What I want to um, also uh, 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 touch on maybe what is nice is. You've, you've grown a lot over the last uh, one and a half years. I remember when we got more uh, uh, close and started working was, uh, um, of course, when, when I, I needed a, a coach to help me with the, with, uh, the dropshipping and building this uh, on this vision uh, uh, I had, right, to build like a, a sick one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Um, at the time, you, you were doing like 10K a day, which yep. is a huge difference to where you are at right now. And in those those months, you 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 grown like this, right? Yeah. So can you take uh, uh, us back to how how that went for you? Yeah. So I think even when I applied for the for the coaching uh, job, I didn't even do ten k a day, maybe even less. Um, but I always wanted to help people. That's uh, why I became a personal trainer. Uh, I like to help people. But one thing I I really despise especially in the industry we are in, um, is that there are people claiming to have done X and X. Uh, well, they haven't done that right, but they are doing very great with their coaching business. That's just something I, I despite it always. So um, I think when this opportunity came, like, hey, Samuel, of course, we all know your track records. We know what you're doing. Um, I thought, man, I have to do this. I don't have to self-promote me in a certain type of way. Um, uh, I know already know what type of clients we're going to get with with, with the reputation of Icon, um, so I really wanted that. But of course, I cannot be the guy who only does seven, six or seven or eight k a day and then wants to coach people, right? I always want to be a good example for current clients for myself. So that's also when I promised to myself, okay, you're going to have this opportunity. I think I uh, I grabbed and claimed that opportunity perfectly. Um, but back then, I always said. Never in a million years you're going to do uh, uh, less than any student that joins the program, right? With some exceptions there, but they are branding students. Um, so uh, then I came home from Thailand. Um, I had very good calls with people from your network uh, that became friends in my network. I, and then everything just blew up. I think uh, October, uh, or we started in September, October at 200K. And uh, in November, I did 10x that, uh, and same in uh, in December. So that's also how, where how my did, network. What, where, where, how did that happen? Uh, what, what, what was the, the shift? Limited belief, man. Limited belief, because that's where I live by right now. So let's say um, your goal next year, Samuel, is to do 100K in profit, right? Then you start to work towards 100K in profit. You won't start to work to 300k or 400k in profit because you set your goal at 100k. So I always set my goals pretty pretty low, um, and I was happy with that. But I, when you are talking with different people in the industry, which are basically the same as you, uh, and they have way different goals, um, then you start to to uh, to perform towards those goals, right? If you, if you think I can do two million a month, then you of course are not happy with 10k in a day. So you start to perform to multiple markets, um, different ways of advertising, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, that, that really helped me tremendously back in the day. And, and um, also what I've, I've seen throughout uh, the, the last years for me, but I can, think I can also talk for you, is like the, the network and the connections. Yeah, that's so, uh, yeah. That's so uh, important. Like uh, <laughs> a friend of mine, his father, I will say a, a saying in Dutch, he says, uh, it gaat er niet om wie je bent, maar om wie je kent. And that's really true. So basically he says, it's not about who you are, but who you know. And um, right now, uh, of course, with the knowledge, but also with my network, if I had to start from zero all over again, 
I would be in zero, zero stress because there are yeah. so many people willing to help me out or willing to give me an opportunity. And back then I was really a lone wolf. I wanted to do everything by myself. I didn't want to have Instagram or didn't want to share anything. Um, and right now that's, that really changed, of course, because you see the power of impact and the power of, uh, of network. You have to put yourself out there. I, I think it's uh, a, 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 uh, a mistake I made in the beginning as well, the lone wolf mentality. Yeah. It can only get you so far. It can get you, uh, I'm not going to lie, you, it can get you to, uh, to your uh, 1K day, 10K day, 20K plus even. But where, where it's a problem is once you have obstacles and you need solutions yeah. because you don't know the people. You cannot ask your, your full a WhatsApp list full of contacts because you don't have any. The same I have right now. I don't stress about anything for the future because if my business dies, with it, which it, it, it will not, I will have uh, 10 other things and 10 other uh, uh, options. Or let's say, let's say a, um, a platform doesn't work as good anymore, doesn't convert as well can just chat with a few people and already have the answers, right? Or mm -hmm. there's a problem with a, a bank or how to um, protect my assets properly, set things up in terms of taxes. Bro, yeah. I, I, have the, I have the people in the, in the contact. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, most people, they want to, uh, uh, they try too much themselves, which will lead to failures and uh, a lot of uh, money that they will waste. So yeah, it's massive. No, really massive. That's also when I came across like guys who are doing actual good numbers. Uh, I think, you know, uh, someone helped me very well. Uh, Farouk, Ecom Legend. Uh, he's a really nice guy. He helped me very well with like um, just dropshipping in general. Um, and that's where you build like a network. You start to meet. They bring up other people. And also don't be afraid just to like meet up with with people. But I would say again, don't be like a network freak because... Like um, if I check at my contact list, like there are a maximum of five or six people I would contact, not 50 or 60. Um, so just to find a healthy balance in there, that's, uh, that's good. And also just to believe you can do it. I think that's the biggest important uh, factor. If you can believe you can do something and you start to, to act like that, I won't see a reason why maybe someone who's watching this can't do the same you are doing or maybe I am doing. Uh, but if you don't believe it, like in all honesty with yourself, yeah. Uh, then it's difficult to get it started. You have to surround yourself with with the the, the people who are doing it and, and doing bigger. Mm -hmm. Use yourself to also take those steps. And also, I think as a, a man, we all have a bit of pride and ego that uh, you, I cannot be for very long around others that are doing very good and well, and I'm not. Yeah, I, same I, for I, me. And I think we all should have that. It's a very good and healthy. Uh, healthy drive yeah yeah always uh, uh, proud but never satisfied right i think that's a good uh, good thing to live by yeah because yeah. once you start to get satisfied then you start to get comfortable and once you start to get comfortable uh things are going downhill very very fast and i think we've talked about this last week i mean people start also to forget what what one year can do we often talk about 2023 for the both of us it that was a very good year but we also uh, went head down the entire year, right? Uh, yeah. we, we put in the work that was necessary. And now I start to think like, okay, in the next year, what do I want to do there? And if you start to develop, and maybe this is not translating to, to beginners too much, but maybe it is. But 1% in one day, or just to improve yourself every day in, in one year, that's such a, such a great thing. Uh, but if you start to think like, I want to be rich next week, yeah, of course you can think that, but... It's, it isn't the right mentality, in my opinion. No, I, I think the right mentality that, that has uh, brought us a lot of success, especially last year, is try to keep as much of the momentum you can. Yeah. Because it, it just compounds. And uh, instead of, uh, okay, you have your first uh, success and you just go, uh, go crazy and party and uh, all kind of that stuff, you, you lose that momentum again and you have to pick it up. And... I've seen it with you, with myself, also close friend uh, Vince. Just uh, keep pushing at it mm -hmm. and uh, put a lot in you. Just see the opportunities. You see what is working. You understand the market and everything just comes to you. Instead of in the, in the beginning, oh man, I, I, I was just chasing one success and then I, I would enjoy. And now 
I get most of my uh, pleasure out of just the, the business doing better, growing in 100%, general. But also when business is doing better and yourself is doing better, you start to see way different opportunities. For example, sometimes I talk with some people and they always did very well, but now they're not doing very well and they don't see any opportunity anymore. Mm. Um, so that's what also what I have. When business is not going too well, you start to be a little bit in a negative mindset because you're doing negative numbers. Uh, but once you're in that momentum, you keep going, you see this idea, I want to implement this, or you see this idea, I want to implement that. That's why momentum is so important for me. For example, past three weeks, I was in Dubai um, with my with my girlfriend and I enjoyed it very much there, but uh, it wasn't the, the uh, it was a great Dubai experience and great new insights, but I wasn't in the momentum of building. And I'm always happiest also, when I calm of mind, when I'm building, that's just what I like. I just like here Saturday, Sunday. I'm always at the office just to build. Um, uh, so next that time I'm going to Dubai, I will take uh, precaution just to order a desk, order a monitor, so I can just keep building. Just ra yeah, rather than just working in your hotel room. And even though we we had a great time, I think we did uh, like a good Dubai. We did like things everybody would have dreamed of. But then I'm still not internally happy because you're not not building, you know, and that's what I read. I, I'm addicted to, to building right now. Yeah. Yeah. Growth in general for me, I can also not enjoy myself just the same anymore. If I, w I would do something, go out or be on a holiday and know that I'm not uh, growing or the business is not doing as, as well. Mm -hmm. No, same, same for me. So I always try to, uh, to, to place uh, the things in my life that, that business always goes well in your building. That's, that's important. So what I also want to uh, to know, because I think it's also inspiring for uh, for people uh, watching or listening, is um, you you've you you've grown a lot over over the, the the past one and a half years. But before this, you uh, people didn't know Dennis, right? And also, there are many people who do got good numbers, but nobody knows them. So how does it feel for you to also have like some type of uh, authority or, or, or status that you build yourself by, of course, your success and your numbers, uh, but also at the moment of, of who you've become? Yeah, I think that translates way more in the, the community we have, of course, because I'm, I'm not like a big show off on, on, on Instagram uh, just yeah, right now, not maybe later. Uh, but I think it became because I live by, by honesty and integrity. So um, people really know the, the numbers I'm doing, I'm sharing it. Um, and that really gives a good boost because of course it's nice when we have like a group's coaching and there are like 20 questions waiting to be asked towards me or towards you. It gives you a, a, a moment of being proud as well. I mean, there are guys who are um, investing in, in, in my time. Um, and then, of course, I want to give the, the, the best performance possible, the best insights possible. Uh, so that really, really gives me a good, uh, yeah, a, a good something in my heart, I think. What, what were maybe some of your, uh, yeah, your, your success stories with, uh, with clients of yours that you've privately, uh, how did you uh, stand out for you? Yeah, and I think... Um, especially, I think once you start to become like a coach or you start to um, teach other people what you're doing, uh, I think it helped me maybe the most. Maybe I, I, I am the biggest success factor because um, in all honesty, it kept me so sharp. Uh, it kept me wanting to do more every day. Uh, we want to, to uh, provide as much, of course. And I always said it, I think I said it in this interview as well, there will never ever be a student who turns over more than I do, because of course then you have to do the, all the things yourself. But I think there are definitely some stories. Um, for example, the very first student we had, he was from my hometown actually as well. Um, he did like $1 million in a month. That was crazy, selling basically a, a product I've dropshipped myself as well, but then through a unique strategy in the US market. Um, I think two, two guys who came with us, they are uh, like, uh, they, they did some things in the past and they were still working in construction and now yeah. they are in Dubai, they are doing very good. They did their first million in three months as well. So that basically got a little bit of myself back. Um, I coached a guy who was doing a, a, a taxi job, um, and then he quit with that and started to do e-com full time. 
And there are, of course, many other stories as well. But I think um, sometimes I just get these messages like, hey, Dennis, I just want to thank you, even though it's like one year ago, but the things you've done, uh, it's, 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 it's crazy. Um, yeah, those are the messages. I, I let them read my girlfriend or my mother. I said, you see, this is what we are doing it for. And uh, that's nice. Yeah, that's that's very nice, man. So, and uh, yeah, in all honesty, I'm a little bit of an emotional person. So sometimes that makes me em like emotional of happiness, of course, because uh, if you can have such a big impact on somebody's life, I mean, that's um, that's where I really get my internal gratefulness from. You cannot compare it with, with any anything uh, to mm. the ability to 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 really help others, but then also them transforming their life. It's just. It's just sick because it means so much more. That means so much more than your own success at one point. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it means way more. And of course, we right now have like two guys in our mastermind program. And I thought, hey, I know this name from somewhere. I, I know it. And then I looked into my Instagram DMs and he messaged me like, I think half a year ago, he'll, hey, what are the best tips you have as a, as a beginner dropshipper? And right now this guy does with us like uh, 50 to 60K profit a month. I mean, those are things that are like um, un uncomparable. So that also um, gives me like so much motivation and, and, uh, and happiness, um, the, the program we have. Um, I said it to you, basically the whole circle I, I have right now ar around me it's all come from millionaire commerce, like the friends I have right now. You, of yeah. course, we, we hang out a lot. Um, uh, pe people, of course, I have some old people, but still uh, my major circle is all from millionaire commerce. It's cra it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unreal. And it's, I think you have to at one point, um, or you don't, you have to, but it's better if you have a big vision to also surround yourself with others who share that because yep. We really connect over, uh, of course, the business we do, but also uh, we, we both like many of the same things, right? You, you like mm -hmm. to travel, I like to travel, I like making money, you like making money, like, um, th th that's the, and, and other things, of course. But <laughs> that's, very, that's very good to, um, if I look at my circle, everyone is doing something, or at yeah. least, I think most of them are uh, entrepreneurs, um, but... Also, some of the friends I have that aren't doing business, they support 100% what I do. If I, a yeah. uh, good friend of mine, Brett, for example, if I send, he doesn't do uh, e com or things like that. If I send him a, a screenshot of I, I do half a million in a day, he, he's like, oh, crazy, man. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've met him. And now he also sometimes sent me a message like, yo, you're killing it. He, he's like a very great guy. So, of course, not your entire circle should be like only econ but it should be people who want to uplift mm -hmm. you or want to see you yeah. better that's the that's the biggest thing and in all honesty my my old friends i don't hate them i don't despite them but they didn't have that impact on me right um so as a matter of fact they would even say oh you are crazy for working so hard or um they even said you are scamming people or this or that or um then it's an excuse for them to justify where they are at. And they yeah. are probably still at the same place five years ago. Same. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, re that's really great. And I think we, uh, you and me and Ruben, of course, grew way more during the, the years because I started to develop. And once you are recognizing somebody starts to develop, that's just great to, to surround yourself with. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's for me the, the biggest thing, just to have like a good circle around you. Just with people who want to see to see you doing better. It doesn't have to be like the the craziest guys. Um, so I also have a friend like that, Ruben, um, from my hometown. He just wants to see me better. He also does not do e-com, but he is also to, just doing his thing and try to improve himself, right? And that's why I have nothing more than than just respect for. And it makes it better to have just people around you who understand you. I think yeah. that's it. I really like my life way more now compared to two or three years ago, because now I have people that understand uh, understand me and what, what I'm working on. The respect is mutual, right? Yeah, mutual indeed. That's important. Okay, so uh, before we uh, we uh, end uh, the interview, uh, I have the two questions. One, I think we, we haven't uh, uh, asked in the beginning, but what at the moment is like your record mom for record uh, day? Yeah, so record day is a little bit over 
100,000 dollars, US dollars. That was last Black Friday. And uh, funny because two weeks before that, we weren't doing, like rarely doing any, any revenue because uh, we had some issues with auto payment processors. Um, so we scaled that pretty quickly in uh, the US Australian market. Um, so yeah, that's the, the, that's the record day we've just, uh, we've just done. Um, yeah, that's it basically. Very good. Yeah, and and uh, I, I think we discussed this at Affiliate World, right? With dropshippers, it's also the over how long do you do you make the money, right? That's Everyone, it. Uh, that's it. Because, yeah, and I'm always honest. Like uh, right now, we haven't been able to succeed to do those numbers every every day in a month, um, as we have our obstacles as well. Um, but that's a uh, that's also why I was so inspired, which I said in the beginning of this interview. That friend of mine who just did four million in a month. I mean, four million in a month um, to do that on a branded dropshipping uh, strategy. That's crazy. So. Um, those are the things I want to aspire this year, uh, just to do it more consistently. And, and, and you can always like also reinvent what you're doing, right? Maybe yeah. for you, it's also now uh, time for a, a, a new chapter with like new, uh, like uh, new uh, projects within e-com still. Yeah. Like for, for myself as well. We yeah, also for me as well. A, a women's brand we are working on uh, besides Icon, right? I nice. think, and, and it's not all, always, uh, of course, money is important because it's a, a metric of how good are you doing and is it working, right? But it's also, I, I want to challenge myself in new things. Um, in all honesty, um, I've done uh, like crazy days, crazy months, but once you start a, new, start a new project and you start to get those sales, those bring back like the goosebumps you always had in the beginning. So uh, that's also what we want to do. And maybe we will have like a, a new interview end of the year and we will see on the projects we've worked on. And uh, maybe we can share a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The, the last thing I wanted to uh, ask for someone uh, watching this who's wa watched this uh, entire interview, they might be stuck at the plateau that can be 1K a day, not getting further, or maybe uh, 10K a day can offer around there what, what would you what would you say to to them um, I think if, if you're like a major beginner just get going and, and keep going because I think we've never saw someone or you maybe a, 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 as who is watching this right now you also never saw someone who keeps doing it every day day in day out uh, feel um, so that's that's the biggest thing just to get going and I think um, maybe going from certain type of numbers to, to bigger numbers is um, ask yourself like which types of numbers do I want to hit um, how many orders do I need to do for that um, uh, what's my AOV so let's say you want to do 600,000 in one month that comes down to roughly 20k in one day let's say your average order value is 70 euro you have to do 300 orders a day right uh, so that means um, if you're doing 200 orders a day you simply just need to do 50% uh, more work, right? Whether that's increasing ad spend with 50%, um, maybe scaling to horizontal markets, maybe um, try different offers, try different products within your niche. Um, so that's one thing I would just write it down and uh, start to perform by that by day by day and just to see if you're on the right track. That's what I did as well. And input is output. Uh, Always. Where you say that also often. Yeah, it's, it's, but that, that's with everything. Input is output. As long as your input is, is right, uh, output will always follow, whether that's in a month, whether that's in a week or maybe in a year. Um, input is output 100%. Yeah, and, and uh, also what, what I want to add to that is don't always lean on what has worked uh, in the past. Mm. Try, try, try to uh, seek also new strategies, uh, connect with others, new impulses. I think that's very, very important as well. Change your surroundings. Um, I always wish, uh, lived up north in a relatively small town. Right now I've moved, moved close to Amsterdam or basically Amsterdam. Um, the environment I have here is so different than I had back there because I felt like I was maybe a little bit of the king there right now. It's way different because in Amsterdam, of course, it's way different. Um, and of course, going to new cities like Dubai, etc. Uh, just to change your surroundings, change your, your POV on the world. Um, because 
Previously, that's funny, uh, let's end it with that. I, I despised rich people when I was like 18, 19. I always said they need to pay more tax. I don't know where I was with my head. Maybe it was a little bit because of my mother, but, uh, and now my POV has changed so much, right? Because you start to see behind it. Uh, I should think they should even pay less tax because um, they are the whole driving factor yeah. for, uh, for, for, the, for the country. But um, yeah, that's just so crazy. So how my POV has changed on, on, on money in, in, in six years. That's also how it can change for you, maybe who watches this on business or maybe about yourself. Um, start to believe in yourself as well. Um, because right now we are in a time and age where making money online is really that simple and easy. Um, I would not waste a single second. I would just get started after this interview right away. Yeah. Powerful, man. Very, uh, very good uh, uh, interview. And uh, yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, proud on uh, on Dennis as well. His growth over the the last years, uh, insane. Remember uh, when I saw his post in our Facebook group we had when he just started uh, uh, with uh, with dropshipping. Now, yeah, sitting here, um, yeah, a lot has changed. Also, the lives yeah. we uh, we've touched, of course, helping them um, ourselves. Also, uh, a lot of uh, uh, people we have inspired inspired along the way. So we'll uh, we just keep going, right? We keep I want to keep going. Let's do another one in a year. And I think uh, we have so much to share on uh, 2024 as well. That's it. All right, guys. Thank you uh, for watching. Leave a comment on uh, the video, uh, our, your opinion. Also, if you have some, uh, some questions for, uh, for Dennis, we can uh, touch on maybe next time. So uh, thank you. See you. Thank you. Ciao.